takes a while to step back and really take a look. I'm seeing things that I don't like, that I wouldn't have noticed had I not taken a break. This angle right here really bothers me. I'm going to change that, find my edge, angle it a little bit, push against it, push and pull back like that, and alter it. The joy of pastels is that they're so forgiving. If you make an error, I've already showed you, shown you one way to fix it. Often it takes a few days to really check out a painting before you can consider it done. You won't always see what's wrong right away. I've made the mistake of putting a painting directly into a frame, and a couple days later I go, what was I thinking? There's so many things that I should be changing about that. I'm going to try a technique. I've really never tried this before, but I really wanted to take some Giro pastels, which are somewhere between hard and soft. You can do a beautiful stroke over it. However, you can get some very nice sharp lines. So let's see if I can put some lines on here that are take me into my focal point. Just adding a little bit of energy. Red on this beautiful blue is pretty darn nice too. Here are some small studies of opals. I'm trying to figure out why I don't like the ones on the painting at this point. And I looked up on Google some different opals to see what the characteristics are. I'm learning that it is more dramatic if it starts dark on one side and then some of the colors shine through, but they have to be tamped down, just pushed down because I didn't want the paper texture. So I'm probably going to go for something like this, a little bit more subtle than these lighter, brighter ones, where the colors are embedded deep into the darkness of the opal itself. I've had a chance to check out and look at the painting overnight and I'm not pleased with it at this point. So you're going to see me brush down the opal itself because I think it's getting muddy and I don't really care for it. I'm also noticing some things that it takes overnight to look at. I don't like this vertical here and I believe that the colors all the way around are too similar. It doesn't please me. So I'm going to step up and take this opal down. And I'm going to do it as per some of the studies that I've been looking at. I'm just going to push a little bit with my paintbrush, as you can see. The color will come straight down, and then I will rework it. I'm going to start from dark and then have my lightest edge right around here. I'm actually pushing the brush forward and it's all just falling straight down. One thing many of you pastel artists already know is please don't blow on your painting in the studio. The airborne particles are not good for you. Sometimes I just flick it like this and you can see it coming down. So let's see if I can make this work. I'm going to start with some very dark values. I've also turned my lighting down because I think it was washing everything out. Let's see if this is better. So here we go. I'm reaching into my U Earth, excuse me, Blue Earth, picking up my paper towel and checking my colors. I'm going to go with some darker values in more neutral something like this, and I'm just swiping, carving into the edge above it. That's a nice little trick there. Let's see what we can do with this one. Again, another dark blue. And because opals have almost a milky look to them, I don't want the texture of the paper in this case to show. So instead of 
doing a big wipe, I'm just tamping it down ever so slightly smudge. The shape of the opal itself does not please me. I'm going to take my Terry Ludwig, clean it off, and recarve right about here. I'm also going to use this as a little bit of a shadow maker on the underlying edge under the layer that's sitting on top. Again, I'm going to tamp it down. The difference between rubbing back and forth and tamping is I'm just going to push it into the board itself and it'll create a very slight dark halo for me. As I come forward towards the bottom edge, I'm going to come a little lighter. These are small pieces of elements inside and we'll see if we can make this work. Tamping down again. It's always funny when you watch a video, at least when I do. I'm sitting there talking to the screen going, no, don't do that. That doesn't work. And then finally the instructor does something and it just all pulls together. Let's hope I can do that on this one. And, and it seems to be working so far. I've tried it a number of times, have not liked my results. Now I'm going into a very pure yellow. I'm being careful right at the edge because I have a lot of this dark, dark, dark on here. I'm going to push it right into the paper. I do use fixative at the end of a painting because of the horror that I had when I shipped a painting off to PSA in New York and it dusted very badly and I couldn't even recognize my own painting. I was in tears. I'd like to get it a little bit lighter at the bottom edge and I'd like to put some magentas in it and I am putting that leading edge down and swiping up so I get that gradation for it and then I'm going to go back with some of those really rich blues that I started with. If you're watching the screen and you're yelling, stop, I understand. I do that all the time when I'm watching someone else's video. Okay, for now I'm going to stop working on the opal itself. I will come back to it. I have found that these yellow greens happen to be very bright almost lighter than white in some cases. So we're going to put a dot there, but more importantly, I'm going to highlight my edge here with that. Like this is what's giving off the light. Not so happy with that. That might have to go away. I love how this brush just takes stuff off. It works really well. Let's go back into the greens for that but maybe a little bit darker than what was there. Curling up my fingers so I don't smudge the rest of the stuff there. This is a leading edge facing there. This is an edge that could catch some light. As well as this. Another thing that happens when you do this type of painting, you have to be super careful that you don't end up with faces. Like I don't want that to be a portrait or a profile of someone. So I have to be very careful with that. I might do better carving in with my eggplant. So let's see what I can do here. And we'll add a few more detail lines. Get some more dark in there. So this is the lightest lime green that I've got. Let's see what that does. That's pretty bright. I'm going to go with a pure white and in abstracts I feel very comfy using pure white. I don't have any problem with pure white or even black. Just 
doing a little highlight there. Again, I'm going to swipe. And add a little glint right about here. I am going to go back to some of the outer edges where I've got a lot of deep blue and smooth some of those out simply because I don't want your eye going out that way. And I'd like a little more drama towards the center of attention where, where is the party? Sometimes I like the texture of the paper and at other times I will, for instance, just watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to just tamp it down a little bit. I want to lose a little bit of the texture of that paper. Sometimes I love it and sometimes it's too much. Now, I'm not rubbing it in, I'm just tamping it down. I'm putting my finger on it and just a tiny, tiny push. That texture can detract from what's going on in your center of attention, so you do need to be cognizant of it, be aware of it. Again, sometimes it's wonderful. If I were going to do a portrait, I would not use this kind of paper. I would use a UART um, 400, 600, something a lot finer in tooth. Now, if I wanted a very, very loose, impressionistic portrait, perhaps. I'm rolling it. I'm twisting my wrist. I'm making it move. I'm also cognizant of all my other lines. I don't want to do a bunch of parallel lines. I want to connect things. I want to make things, again, take me to my focal point. I'll restate some of these. I want to make it look very opalescent, very lit up from the middle. So I've put this painting aside for a couple of days and I have truly stared at it over and over. I have taken some things off and redone them. I worked some more on my opal area. I've restated a lot of the darks with my Terry Ludwig. I've defined some of the fissures in the rocks. I have changed some of the coloring here. It was getting a little bit too lime green all over and it bothered me as being much too repetitive. I've added some very subtle but interesting marks and lines to give some interest. Most of them are pointing directly to the focal point, creating a little bit of excitement. This one, as I mentioned earlier, will be called Fire Opal because of this rock here. I'm going to show you a little bit at this last stage on how I restate some of those darks. This is a very teeny tiny fragment of my Terry Ludwig and I will just go over some of these to restate them. I'm barely touching and then I'll push harder and lighter and so on. So I'm going to push hard in that crevice and then lighter and down here. I'm going to create a few more cracks here. This is a little too equidistant all the way around. So what I will do there is take a dark blue that's in that same family, again with my paper towel. Let's see if this is right. And put it down, find an edge, put it down, push forward just a hair, and then swipe back. Push forward, swipe. And I'll do the same on this side to narrow that dark line there. And it's a little bit too even here, so I'm going to just change it. Carving back and forth. One more here. Okay. I think I'm going to call it quits for now. I will show you a close-up photograph of it when we're all done. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please feel free to ask me any questions that you'd like, and I will continue posting more and more of these videos, first to YouTube, and then eventually we'll have full classes on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Feedback is definitely appreciated.